this After Effects tutorial I'll show you how to animate this ringing bell character. Hi, my name is Manuel. We'll create this loop in just a few minutes and I found an expression which loops path animations, so stick around. Alright, let's dive right in. Here's the comp. I already added a background layer with a gradient ramp. With no solid selected, we grab the pen tool and draw the rough shape of the bell. Let's use the proportional grid as a guide. We set three points, one up here in the center, then two down here to get this triangular form. Let me quickly change the label color. Then we use the Convert Vertex tool to create the bell shape. Hold Shift while pulling to move in a straight horizontal line. And let's shrink these two outer handles down. By pressing V, we switch back to the Selection tool. Let's actually fill the form and set the stroke width to zero and name the layer bell. We don't need the grid anymore. With no layer selected, let's add an ellipse by double-clicking on the ellipse tool. We open the ellipse path property, release the constraint proportions chain and set the size to 200 by 200 pixels. Let's name it head and move it up. And move the layer down. Time to make it look nice. Starting at the top, no stroke for the head and let's choose a gradient fill. We start with a pink orange and end up with purple. Make sure you choose the selection tool to adjust the start and end points of the gradient. Let's add a layer style by right clicking on the layer, go to layer styles and choose inner shadow. We open the property and set the color to white. We need to set the blend mode to normal to actually see it. Opacity 75%, the angle around 160 degrees, distance 25, size around 10, noise around 60%. That's all up to your personal taste of course. Same with the bell shape, no stroke, linear gradient ramp fill. I stick to the colors we used before and adjust the start and end point. Then we simply copy the layer styles property and paste it to the bell layer. We open the inner shadow property and change the angle slightly to around 200 degrees. Adjust the other settings until it feels right. Nice. Next we duplicate the head and rename it. I think it's called Clapper and move it down so that half of it sticks out below the bell. We open the layer styles property and change the shadow color into a dark purple. And set the angle to around 350 degrees. And we should darken the fill gradient colors a little bit as there ain't much light down there. Let's animate. But before we need to link the clapper to the bell and the bell to the head. Then we grab the anchor point tool and move the anchor point of the clapper up to the top of the bell. And we move the anchor point of the bell to the center of the head. Then we set the beginning of the workspace to 10 frames, B is the shortcut. The end to 90 frames, N is the shortcut. We go to 10 frames, set a rotation keyframe for the bell and the clapper, a position keyframe for the head. We set the bell rotation to minus 25 degrees, the clapper rotation to run minus 18 degrees so that it seems to hit the side of the bell. Then we go to 30 frames and set the bell rotation to 25 degrees, the clapper hits the left side of the bell. At 50 frames we copy and paste the first keyframes. Go back to 10 frames again and move the head 50 pixels to the left. Then we go to 30 frames and move it double the amount to the right. Because we need to go back to the center first, then move on to the right. Then copy and paste the first keyframe. 
To actually loop it, we hold Option and click on the stopwatch here to open the expression field. And add loop out. Parenthesis, semicolon. And repeat that for the other two properties. When it's dark for you to see, you'll be close to me. Then we select all keyframes and open the graph editor. Make sure the snap icon is activated and edit speed graph is selected. And slow down the start and the end of the animations. Alright, now we need to move the bell and head keyframes 4 frames to the left, cause the clapper needs to follow the bell. Much better. Now let's add some text. We choose a frame where the bell is roughly even, grab the title tool and choose a nice font. It's HWT model for me. Let's position it somewhere in the lower half of the bell. Then we add a gradient ramp starting wide in the top left corner and ending up with a light orange in the bottom right corner. To support the illusion of a round shape, we add sphere eyes. Set the center somewhere in the lower center and increase the radius. Adjust the settings a little bit. Finally, we need to pre-compose the text layer. Let's name it text. And link it to the bell shape. Awesome. One last thing. Let's turn it into a character and add a face. We grab the ellipse tool and add a small round shape. No fill, stroke width 4 pixels wide. We duplicate the ellipse shape, position the two shapes in the center. And with the layer selected, we grab the pen tool and draw a mouth below. We name the layer face and link it to the head layer. Then press U to see all keyframes. Move to 6 frames and position the face on the right side of the head. Then set a position keyframe. Move to 26 frames and move it to the left. At 46 frames, we copy and paste the first keyframe again. We add the loop out expression and use the graph editor and smooth the animation. Awesome. With no layer selected, let's quickly draw an arm using the pen tool. It consists of three points. Name the new layer arms. Duplicate the shape. Move the path to the right to use it as the second arm. And of course, link it to the bell layer. With no solid selected, we draw a leg. Name the layer legs and move the layer to the bottom. Then, guess what? <laughs> Duplicate the shape and place it next to it. The legs won't be that straight though, so let's go to six frames and set the first pose. Don't forget to set two path keyframes. Actually, <laughs> at six frames. 
Then we go to 26 frames and adjust the two paths. The bottom points stay at the same position, we just move the knees and the hips. Then at 46 frames we copy and paste the first keyframes again. Of course, we adjust the speed curves. Then there's a problem, as the loop out expression doesn't work for paths. I did some research and found an expression online which actually does that. I've put it in the description below and the link where I found it. So we copy and paste the expression into the expression fields. The first one. We open the second one and paste. And here we go, Christmas magic. On the left side I've added some videos you might like, so see you there in a second. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and please hit the bell to get notified when my next video is coming out. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye!